stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app. Here's another house that baffled the neighbors, the Ruth and Sam Ford House in Aurora by architect Bruce Goff. In fact, when it was under construction, the owners erected this sign on the front lawn that read, we don't like your house either. That's the home's longtime owner, Sid Robinson. Goff is known for using unusual materials, materials other architects wouldn't have thought of. He's not kidding. Materials include rope and discarded chunks of glass. The skylight in the bathroom is a recycled dome from a World War II bomber. And one wall is made of coal. Not surprisingly, the architect was as unusual as the house. Goff was a prodigy. He designed his first home at age 14. Where did the architect uh, of this uh, place go to architecture school? That's a setup. Well, he didn't. He went through high school only. Only a high school education? Yes. And he learned architecture by working in a firm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, you could get credentials yes. just by working. By working. Grandfathered and in. When architecture graduate students come and visit the house, I try not to discourage them by saying <laughs> that the architect of this house never went beyond high school. <laughs> and so Goff was just obviously very intuitive? Yes, and he liked to work with shapes. The house was commissioned in 1947 by Ruth Van Sickle Ford. She wanted it not only as a home, but as a bit of self-promotion. So Ruth Ford owned this art school in downtown Chicago, which is where she met Goff, because he taught for her. <laughs> And she wanted to make a trophy house to advertise her school. This one. And this was the house. So she made sure it got into Life magazine. Yeah, in there it is. And was it, was it a pretty uh, good uh, propaganda job in here on the? I've, I've never understood what the consequences were of whether this made a difference or not. Yeah, <laughs> but it made a difference in the traffic outside. Oh, it certainly did. After this was printed, on Sunday afternoons, they had to have a traffic cop around the block because of all the curiosity. So many people wanted to come. Ruth felt the house really did bring notoriety to the Chicago Academy of Fine Art, where she was president and director for more than 20 years. But the house was more than a publicity stunt. She worked closely with the architect to make sure it perfectly suited her lifestyle and work. That wall made of coal was a gallery where Ford's watercolors popped against the black background. The quiet space upstairs was her studio. And as one of the few women to lead a prestigious art school at the time, she wanted a great place for entertaining. Golf was very responsive to clients. She liked to have her guests not separated from her when she was cooking. Her mother lived with them for one year. Oh. So the two bedrooms are completely separate with their own bathrooms. When I look at this house, it feels like it's, it's modern and it's primitive. Yes. I, I mean, when you think about a round house with a fireplace in the middle, that's a, that's a primordial human uh, habitation. I mean, you think of igloos and yurts and teepees and so on. I mean, that's the way you would conserve heat and so on. So this house is based on a, an ancient idea of habitation, but it's a very contemporary house. How do you think of the beauty in co the context of this house? That's a good question, because beauty is such a slippery concept. Mm -hmm. And I like to think it has two uh, aspects. It has the circular geometry, which is very calming, and the stimulation of the textures and the colors. So it's beauty that's active and beauty that's quiet. Oh, that's nice. In I was gonna say that's beautiful. <laughs> in the same building, yes.